I think really all that was was they were they were the Z boys for that one contest where they all like wiggled around on the ground. <laughs> well, kind of like the start, <laughs> they all wiggled around on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, we're here with Tony Alba. We're going. This is the letters. The the topic of discussion here is classic skate teams. Your favorite personal skate teams, teams that you kind of thought were cool but you weren't at all involved in. In 1963, Hobie formed a skateboard team and introduced thousands to the sport of sidewalk surfing. Well, the Hobie team I always wanted to be on as a kid was the one that had, uh, I think his name was John Fries. They had Davey Hilton, Steve Hilton, Torger Johnson, Danny Bearer. And that team was the most surfy, most advanced, and like stylish surf, surf skate team of the 60s. Kind of the Zephyr team, even the mold for the Zephyr team came from that team. Did you pick the skateboarding? Yeah, I think so. Are you a surfer though? Yeah. Well, we didn't even want to be on the skate team. The guys that were on the Zephyr team wanted to be on the surf team, but some of us, including myself, didn't have the skills to be as good as the older guys that were actually the surf team. So we had to side door it or back door it, and that's how we did the skate team. So we started the skate team, so then eventually that kind of pushed us into being on both teams. Then when the Zephyr team kind of fell apart, these guys were kind of like my farm team that helped form where I was going to take it competitively by being on the same team with those guys. Because they'd won a lot of contests in the 60s and the early 70s. It was Bruce Logan and Torger Johnson in particular. It's all about influence and emulation. Definitely. Like, even, for, like, Definitely. E even going back to like you guys, like everybody's got their influence and everybody's emulating something and putting their own spin on it. Definitely. What's your favorite Packers skate team of all time? Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I saw the Pepsi team skate the half pipe of the Rose Parade. Yeah, I, this Pepsi team yeah. came to my school and we were so bummed they didn't bring the ramp. They came and did fucking G-turns and just bummed us out. <laughs> Me and Nash were so heartbroken. Spun a few 360s in our auditorium. We were like, what, where's the ramp, man? We want to ride the ramp. Pepsi had a team? Yeah, like in the 70s, like when I first got exposed to skateboarding Pepsi at all, was the first it was Red like Bull. the Pepsi team. I don't even know who was on it, but they were my favorite. Mm -hmm. I remember being incredibly impressed by Bad Company because of their advertising campaign it was just so out to fucking lunch. Mike Weed was like fucking had a wig on and was getting pulled over by the highway patrol and it said my weed's legal and it was just like, yes, Bad Company. Skate team. I don't know, man. Tunnel was pretty heavy. Tunnel was heavy. Tunnel was heavy, dude. <laughs> you saw that jersey, that red, white, and blue jersey, man. You were just like, yeah, dude, I want to be a part of that shit, you know? First team I was really psyched on was Tunnel. I mean, you couldn't do any better. I'd seen the other the other brands in the magazine and shit, but Tunnel was badass, you know? It was, it was like, it was like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a skateboard team, but they're, they're badass. I gotta admit, I love the Veriflex team because Eddie Algar was on it. And yeah, Eric Gresham invented the burial, and I was all about tricks. Uh, we were doing tricks that people didn't do yet, and we were getting points in contests for doing it. And I know everyone made, they're, they're very bots, they were, you know, they were the nerdy team, so, so yeah. to speak. But I was watching them going, like, those guys are sick. They get that rap or whatever because of the Santa Cruz guys and that whole war, that, that yeah, yeah, prefabricated yeah, war. I Eddie Alguera, he's the number one man right now on the Pro Series, and uh, how you doing today? Yeah, it's pretty tough because kind of when you get close to the contest, everybody's all edgy and stuff. Wayne Peters, second on the Pro Series in skateboarding right now. You're going to be up against Eddie Alguera, the number one man. I'm not scared or anything. He doesn't bother me. I just got to make all my tricks. I went out and bought this board. I had this exact board, this color scheme. Then I learned about Dwayne and Salva and Olsen and how punk rock and awesome they all were. Now if you're talking back in the day when you're talking about Blackheart and Olsen and Salva and Dwayne, when indie showed up on the scene, it's like, oh shit. Like, yeah, you ride indies? It's like, oh, that guy rides indies? Fuck, I want to ride indies yeah. too. Okay, but Sims. Sims was like 
beyond the best team. Bowman, Fulmer, Andrek, Bert Lamar, Doug D. Montmorency. <laughs> yes, you got the name right. It's so Jeez. hard to get the name right. That was the ultimate team. Brad Bowman, Bert Lamar, Lamar, Dave Andrek. That's it. You're never going to beat those guys. Yeah. The first incarnation of Zorlak with Gibson and, and Craig Johnson, like the first time you got to see the Texans show up, they were a force. And they rolled together and they were heavy. Yeah. And they looked different. Craig yeah. Johnson was 6'4 or something. <laughs> and then he had dreads and he cut a hole in his helmet. So his dreads went up. So he's a pineapple. Shut up and skate. Like all of it. Like skate tough or go home. So good. They had Pusshead do all the graphics. Like, and aliens came and talked to him and told him to start a fucking skateboard company called Zorlak. Like that is fucking brilliant. <laughs> and then the Al, you know, the Alva Posse was born. I've got to be on the Zephyr team, the Logan team, and that Alva Posse team. Okay, in my world, those three teams are three of the most influential teams ever. You know, some of the boys. <laughs> you know, um, and that's when like the dreadlocked dagger thing showed up, which is probably the worst thing that ever happened in skateboarding. The coolest thing about the Posse, to me was that everybody came from a different city. And we pretty much had the whole domestic United States, including Hawaii, covered. So it was rad that these guys all kind of came together and made this weird dysfunctional, dreadlocked, leather-wearing <laughs> party bus of a community. It was a freak of nature that we all came together, we bonded, we went out, we skated, we destroyed, and we had a hell of a time doing it. Like, you see their ads, it's just like, how many guys are on that team? Yeah. And they're all, like, they all got the same deal going. Yeah, except for Eddie. The ads of everybody wearing a leather coat and, like, being all, you know what I mean? Like, that was, like... That ad is phenomenal. That was just pure nature, you know? When we got together, it was a posse. It was a gang. We were a skate gang, man. We didn't wear leathers because we had to. That was just how we came. Was because we wanted to be the exact opposite of what the other teams were like, especially the Powell team. And we were like, we want to be the exact opposite side of the coin of those guys. This is the guy in third place, Scott Foss. That was a nice move right there, Dan. We all got together, and the first time we got together was at the Del Mar Pro Am in. Uh, in 79. We were all in the park and he pulled us out to his Volvo wagon and, and then he pulled out the, the original Bones Brigade bomber sees. Nice. With the bomber on the back and the bombs in the sleeve. No, it was an epic time. It was a fucking epic time. We were just little kids, you know. We were 14, 15. I was, I was wet behind the ears myself. When I was 11 or 12, I saw the Bones Brigade show up to Whittier. And they looked they look like a team and like anything they did was something you've never seen. And I was like, those guys are the best ever. It was a group, it was a, a team of kids. Stevie was a fetus. Yeah. I mean, literally. He just fell out of the womb onto a skateboard and was doing cabalarials and frontside inverts. You know, and Jay Smith, like totally underrated. You know, they're fuck, fuck your compulsory runs. Yeah. It's like, and he's got an iron cross on the bottom of his board, and he's Jay Smith, and he wears leather pants. And but you don't get to make videos, and you don't get to have the six Uber, you know, public domain, future primitive, animal chin style Bones Brigade, without selling a million Ray Bones Rodriguez boards. It's not a team sport or a team activity or a team art or whatever. Fucking That's what we said from the very beginning, Jeff. So you're, you're back to where we started. It's bullshit. not really a team sport. Bullshit. Anyway, yeah. Get over it. Bad company, best skateboard team ever. Know this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Go skate. We're out. Boards then were made from balsa wood. The planks were glued together, originally with bark lamps.